You guys told me not to Google anything or read the books until I have watched season one. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Your wish is my command. I still don't know what that means. Your wish is my command. Like, it doesn't make sense to me. Hey guys, my name is Alnik Fox. Welcome to my channel. And today we're going to be doing some research about The Wheel of Time because I'm not reading the book until I have watched season one. Somebody mentioned that... Um, on this channel, my whole, you know, thing has been giving you guys a fresh perspective about um, the trailers and the teasers. And I'm personally enjoying that, you know, I'm just watching the series for what it is and not comparing it to the books. And I think I want to continue that. So the plan is to watch the series, read the book, rewatch the series. It's going to be a long road. You guys are going to be with me. And today we have the official Wheel of Time websites, their Twitter, their Instagrams, everything. And we're going to be doing some background knowledge knowing because they are providing some spoiler free knowledge over there. So let's go ahead and do it. So the very first thing that I came across are character descriptions given in a few words of the main characters. So we have Moraine, the mysterious A Sedai. She did not seem mysterious to me at all. I mean, she seemed like a very straightforward business doing person, a very brave one. And I think, you know, um, deep down, I want to be like that. I mean, I think all the people I know would love to be like her, you know, so confident, just like so regal and so classy. She's, she's perfect. She is just, and she has magic. I mean, you can't get better than that. Lan, our hero, the stoic warder. Um, yeah, I mean, Every warder is pretty much stoic, so. But then we saw him crying in the official trailer and mourning really, really badly. So. I don't think he is stoic after all. Nynaeve, the stubborn wisdom. I have never came across a single person in my life who was wise and not stubborn. It's, it's like a package deal. You're wise, you're also stubborn because they believe they're all knowing. Every single wise person thinks they know best. Like they would come to you in every single problem like, okay, because the laws of the world say this, therefore my deduction is this and this is what's going to happen. And it never happens because the rest of the world does not have a brain or if they have one, they are smart and cunning. Now being wise and being smart are two different things. Wise people have knowledge. Smart people know what to do in a situation and have you in the palm of their hand because they know exactly what to say to a person to impress them. And wise people always state facts and wise people are just not smart. And then on top of that, they are stubborn. Like one day their tongues become the end of them. Rand, the reluctant farm boy, aren't they all? And we have Perrin, the careful blacksmith. Oh my God, you reminded me of Red Riding Hood. They had a blacksmith, his name was Henry. He was a very fine gentleman, but like every girl on earth, we liked Peter, the walking red flag. Matt, the wry scoundrel. He's a scoundrel and on top of that, he is wry. I don't think I'll be a fan. Seven colors, seven callings. Each azure is tasked to a unique duty. Or is it ayer? I don't know. Um, I caught on to that bit um, when I watched the first teaser that every single color might represent a different group of people with different duties. So we have Red Aja have one mission to hunt down all male channelers, like the ones who might think they are Dragon Reborn. Green Aja, when diplomacy fails, the Green Sisters take up arms and fight. I always forget they're all women. It's like, you know, because... Obviously, men exist in the series, so you kind of forget that, you know, like the Amazons, they were just women on Thymuscura, so there was like no confusing. But this, like, I sometimes forget that the Aes Sedai are just women, and they are so powerful looking and so regal and just... Man, I love them. Brown Asia, devoted to knowledge and the collection of ancient wisdom. They chose the color brown for it, huh? <laughs> because there are so many people who believe that a life spent gaining knowledge is rather brown and dull, a death-like boredom of a life. 
but I like the color brown. I almost want to change my curtains to brown. I'm debating between brown and gray. So if you have any recommendations, let me know. <laughs> I think I should go for brown because my doors and you know, the cupboards and everything around here is brown. So I think it will look nice if I have brown curtains. Anyway, um, the yellow azure focus on using the one power to mend wounds and cure illness. But yellow is considered, you know, sort of that color and also the color of happiness. Um, the one power of, wait, um, I think the one power was not supposed to be used against, you know, what the wheel stands for, but it can be used to heal. Okay. Um, the blue Asia blues dedicate themselves to righteous causes and justice. Okay, so the blue are con oh, and she is blue, um, Moraine. Um, so the blues are constantly fighting, and in case something happens to the dip uh, the diplomacy, then the green comes in. Okay. Um, and also, um, are the like what are the greens doing while the diplomacy is standing? Are they just like sitting around waiting for hell to break loose? Um, and then we have the white Ajar are only concerned with logic and philosophy. So they are the ones that are in knowledge and then they are the ones in logic. Ooh, is it like the wise and the smart difference? I love it. Um, I'm, I, I, I would like to join the white ones. The white ones. The dark ones and the white ones. And also, you know, the bad white ones. Okay, um, the grey Azure, um, the greys are the diplomats and political manipulators. So I think they are the grey ones, the ones that I called the white ones, the bad white ones. So they are the grey ones. Mm. And, and I like how they chose the colour grey for them because darkness, that is pure evil. And then there's white, that is pure goodness. And then there are the grey areas and they, the grey ones, from what I've caught on, they believe that they are doing good but they're actually doing bad. So they are the gray ones. I love it. There is one rule above all others for being a man. Whatever comes, face it on your feet. Oh my God, we used to say that back in school. Every time we would have a problem, we would tell each other, be a man. And we would like say it with so much authority and our teachers and principal were, did, they did not appreciate it because they believed in raising fine ladies of gentle manners. So they would say, you must find power in being women. And we were like, okay, can you just like imagine me going up to someone and being like, be a woman. That just does not sound right. I mean, it's, it's a figure of speech. When I tell someone to be a man, I'm not telling them to change their anatomy. I'm telling them to be strong. And yes, women can be strong, but... So my fault that the phrase does not say be a woman. So now we have a little Q&A. How difficult was it to change or leave out characters from the books for screen adaptation? Sometimes very difficult, obviously. People who drive the story or shed light on our characters' backstories or the world of the show always will be more likely to make an appearance. But some people are there in glimpses or subtle notes just for our enjoyment. Um, some extras were named as characters and given things, looks from the books. So keep your eyes peeled. Okay, so that's why you guys told me not to read the first book um, because they're not really going into um, going in um, uh, with the sequence. But I love it. Thank you so much. Like I, I can't thank you guys enough for this because you know sometimes when they are making an international best-selling series into a, a TV show or movie, they're like, okay, everyone knows the backstory. If they don't, just go read the book. We're making this movie as we want. And what that does is it prevents a lot of people like myself from watching that movie or TV show because we have no background knowledge. You know, especially like the younger generation, I'm, you know, I'm unfamiliar with a lot of common things. I have still not watched any of the Harry Potter films. So if you throw something at me like, okay, everyone's watched Harry Potter and they should, should just be able to watch this now, I won't be able to watch it. And I know that not everything is directed towards everyone. And if I am interested, I should do my own homework and my own background search. But to really think about, you know, the greater audience, to keep it a show that is welcoming for everyone, new people and old people who are the readers, I think that is great. And I, and I really, really thank you guys for it. 
because I, I'm like sick and tired of you know movies that just start in the middle and I don't have the time to do a background search on all of them what made you change Tom playing the liar to a guitar? <laughs> Tom is a good example of changes made for the show. For one, I want characters to appear when we have the time to spend to properly introduce them. Oh yes, please properly introduce them. Um, and get enough scenes from them to attract a great act, um, uh, attract a great actor for the role. You will never see scenes on this show where four random people appear, say two lines and then disappear for seasons. Yes! Yes, I love you. I love you. Will you marry me? <laughs> um, and um, it just won't get um, you to the caliber of actor you need and it doesn't properly intro the ca that character to the audience. So for Tom, we wanted to give him a proper introduction and we also wanted him to have a strong masculine energy that made a counterpoint to Moraine. Ooh. We saw actors of all ages, races, and vibes to play Tom, but when Alex um, Villain, I'm sorry, um, a tape came through, we knew he was Tom and moved towards his wife for the character, which was younger and grittier than Book's Tom. The guitar looks much more fitting in his hands and with the voice that than a liar. When he storms onto a stage in the show, it's a moment, and that's why we stand. Okay, whatever. So I'm really glad. I'm really glad. And I'm also tempted to send in a tape of my own for later seasons. Maybe I can also be casted. <laughs> my God, I would love to be a part of something like this. Something so beautiful, so colorful and so thoughtful. What's the average running time of each episode? Amazon is great because each episode doesn't have to hit an exact time like you do in network TV. And these episodes are epic. So we are clocking in between 50 to 65 minutes each. I expected that, but that is not my favorite um, episode length, I would say, because I am more of a 40 minute kind of person. My God, I can't believe I just said that because mostly Turkish TV shows have like two and a half hour long episodes. Can you believe that? I'm like, do you honestly expect me to be free enough to sit down and watch a two and a half hour episode with the ads in between? It's insanity. <laughs> and yet we do it. I mean, I don't watch all of it. I'm just like, I, I can't. Like, I, I, I have not completed a single Turkish show in my life. I watch about like to episode 20 or 30 and then I'm done. You cannot expect me to watch 80 two and a half hour long episodes of the same story. Like, <laughs> I mean, if you were telling me the story of William the Conqueror, then it makes sense. But if you're telling me a rom-com, I can't. Do you have the plot of all the seasons roughly mapped out? <laughs> Honey, they would not have even started writing season one and they probably already had plans for season eight because that's just how it is. You have, you know, these bits and pieces from here and there and the main, you know, the main thing, the hard thing to do is filling it out, giving it a starting, a middle and an ending. With every single book, with every single story, it's the same. And it's really odd because sometimes your idea is something as little as a blink. I remember one day I blinked and I was like, he blinked and he changed. His eye color changed. And I wrote two books about that. Can you imagine writing two books about a blink? I can't believe it. I'm, I think I'm going nuts. I think I'm going nuts. How are you balancing the numerous POVs, point of views in the book versus focusing on Rand? Um, I was really glad that we had multiple point of views, but at the same time, you know, sometimes it has like narration, but it is, you know, from a certain person's point of view, but in like the narration manner. I have never wrote a book like that. <laughs> um, I'm, I do not trust myself with narration. I can't narrate for, my, for the life of me. So it's, and I think I should start that. I think that would really, help me stabilize a book that I'm unable to stable right now. I think I need to do that. Why am I talking about myself so much? I'm here to talk about the Wheel of Time, the Eye of the World, the, the dragons and the rivers and Lan. Milan's cool clock be featured in the show. I love Lan's cloak in the show. It is there. I don't know which cloak they're talking about. If it's an effect that's going to cost a fortune every time a character is on screen, it's a bad use of our money. Unless you want to see all of season one in the wine spring in, then you can have color changing cloaks. 
He had a colour changing cloak. Do you realise how cool that is? <laughs> I need to see that cloak. How much will season one cover book one or spread across several looks amazing? Um, season one will cover book one plus some of the book two and even book three, but also not all of the book one as some of it is in season two. Siptic enough. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I think I got that much. Okay, what's your favorite aspect of the View of Time series? My water. I have to agree. I mean, imagine if, if Lan was, was my water, I mean, I think it's, I think it would have been like illegal. Like, you know, you know, it's, a lot of things are illegal in this world. I think it might have been illegal for the Aes Sedai to be romantically involved with their water, but I, I think, um, no, I would not have given up being an Aes Sedai for even Lan. Like, you know, there, there, there are limits to my obsession. <laughs> would I have? No. No, I would not give up being an Aes Sedai. No. <laughs> Is the scene with Eugene in the water about her one power wisdom testing? I can answer that question. Oh my God, I think they did that after Rosamund, um, sorry, Moraine got them. I think that's, you know, when, when she was testing who could be the dragon and that's when, you know, they threw her in the water to see if she was any powerful or not. Okay. What is the show going to be rated? That is a very good question. Will people be able to watch it with their teenagers? The, the, the absolute crap. The teenagers watch on the internet. What sort of innocent mother are you? Or father? Or sibling? Anyway, um, <laughs> people should certainly be able to watch um, this with their teenagers. I'm, I'm actually glad. I mean, I think this question should have been from a teenager. Can I watch it with my mother? By any chance, are there going to be any topless women walking around? Um, <laughs> Bridgerton did this. They released this like... Um, chart where they mentioned every time duration when the, when there was going to be like a sex scene or something so you could excuse yourself from the room before it appeared and i thought that was absolutely brilliant um but it's it's always better when there isn't a scene like this because uh, my god i had not taken a look at that list and my mother was watching bridgerton and i come into the room i heard the music and i was like are you watching bridgerton and she's like have you watched it and i was like yes and then that moment i forgot all about it and right then they showed anthony doing something that uh, my mother should not have seen. And she was like, Ellen, if you watch this show? And I was like, not really. <laughs> so that was it for this video. Really hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, give me a like. Also comment below and let me know anything you want me to know. Correct me, answer me, whatever. I mean, whatever you, um, you guys want to do, go ahead and do that. It is 6.30 a.m. I literally have decided that nights are days and days are days. I just don't like sleeping. Anyway, um, subscribe. Thank you so much for 600 subscribers. It's, it's insane. <laughs> just a few days back, we were celebrating 500 and now we're at 600. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And yeah, that is it. Make sure to check out my Rosamund art. She does not look like Rosamund. I'm so sorry. Not gonna even comment on it. Um, go ahead and check that out if you would like to if you you are patient enough so go and yeah do that and also um, follow me on my instagram it's at lnf underscore fox <coughs> i'm sick <coughs> um that is it the links will be in the description box i'm the only on the fox and yeah um it's my first time recording with my new light for this channel i believe or maybe did it's not i don't know I need to stop talking. Bye.